Well hello again and welcome to another episode of Davies Springtime Saunters where I take you out onto some of the walking routes in and around Edinburgh. Today I've brought you to my local park. This is uh, Lock End Park and as you can see the water's a bit high at the moment in the lock which is home to many wildlife, herons, ducks, coots, water hens, uh, Canada geese etc. And also has the great privilege of being overseen by our extinct volcano, Arthur Seat. And Lockheed Park and the lock in particular used to be uh, the main reservoir for the Port of Leith, which is further down behind me to, to the north. And uh, back in the 15th and 16th century, uh, this land was owned by the Logan family and in particular the last Lord uh, Logan who was the seventh Baron of Resorig who was born in 1559 and lived through the periods of uh, the problems we had here in Scotland and England with uh, the royalty with Mary Queen of Scots and King James VI etc and the Logan family were rich landowners, in fact owned most of the land all the way down to Leith in the ports. And this is before Edinburgh was a conurbation it is today. And uh, they were wealthy people, the Logans, and made their money mostly from charging tolls and taxes for goods landed at the port of Leith and then transported up uh, up the Eastern Road as it was then, now just Easter Road. Uh, up, up, up into Holyrood and into Edinburgh for the, the people up there and the Logan family were a bit uh, notorious for being a bit unscrupulous and charging taxes and tolls where they were not really warranted and this was a bit of a pain to the burgesses of Edinburgh and indeed to the Crown uh, who were holed up in Edinburgh Castle and you know, the Logans went on but they got into difficulties and they were always in scraps and fights and what have you with the law and with the authorities and particularly the Crown. And um, prior to his death in 1606, uh, the 7th Baron of Resorig, Sir Robert Logan, disposed of most of his lands with only a few bits left and in particular here, uh, Lock End Park and Lock End Grounds. And if you can see just in the distance, uh, is the remnants of the old Lock End Castle and now Lock End House. And uh, as I say, he died in 1606, but um, his story didn't really end there because a couple of years later, uh, evidence came to the authorities that our Sir Robert was involved in a conspiracy to assassinate King James VI and that he, the, the perpetrators of that uh, crime, uh, the, the, the Ruthvens uh, of, of Perthshire, uh, John and Alexander, two brothers, they, they tried to assassinate uh, King James VI in 1600 and failed miserably because the, the king's own uh, protection squad, as they would call it, uh, basically done them in and uh, they were both stabbed and their bodies were brought up to Edinburgh and put on display for all those to see so as, as a deterrent to any others who might uh, wish to uh, exact the same fate upon our glorious king. But as I say, Sir Robert, it came to light two years after his death in 1608 that he was in fact involved in this conspiracy in so far as that he provided accommodation for the Ruthven brothers. Uh, and at, the, at his estate in Fast Castle near Eyemouth and also here at Lock End and uh, as he was dead it was pretty difficult to prosecute him but they, that did not deter the authorities and they exhumed his body from uh, his family tomb in South Leith Parish Church and brought the bones up to Edinburgh and laid them before the court where he was tried on uh, the crime of treason and he was found guilty on the flimsiest of evidence, uh, which was basically a letter written by one of his secretaries to say that he had been in communication with these two uh, conspirators. 
So he was found guilty and uh, basically what left of his lands were, were taken away from him, forfeited as they, they called it back then. And they were all distributed to people that were all friends of King James VI. And uh, the Logan family were then dispersed and had to flee uh, the country altogether. Uh, but, you know, some people say that this was not really a, a, a plot to assassinate the king, except it was a double cross that the king was aware that these conspirators were about to uh, exact a, a heinous crime upon him. And he turned the tables on them. And it wasn't known at the time that Sir Robert Logan was involved. But when it did come to light, he, he met the same fate as the others, although he was already dead. His bones were scattered uh, to the four corners of the country. And, uh, well, that was it. Uh, and f as far as that part goes in the story. Well, I'm going to head on down into Leith now uh, and continue my walk and probably take myself along towards New Haven to the harbour there and then maybe back up and in towards Warriston, St Mark Park uh, and I'll maybe take a wee wander up into town and see what the, the life is like after the lockdown and see if there's many people about hanging about the shops. So once again, thank you very much for your time and I'll catch you all again another time. Bye for now.